So the other night I was uh, sitting at a dinner table with my in-laws. It was um, five of us and uh, I come from a conservative family. My partner comes from a conservative family. Uh, we're all hunters and um, we sat around this table and uh, Uvalde just happened and there was some silence when it came up and I just kind of had a realization, looked around and I said, uh, raise your hand if you've had a gun pointed in your face. And all five of us raised our hands. And it was kind of shocking. I don't think that everyone there knew or had had the conversation with each other at some point, but for some reason I had had that conversation with each of them. Um, where do you go? in a dinner conversation after that. Um, for me, it was when I was, uh, my speedometer was broken and I was pulled over by uh, a police officer who had a gun drawn the moment they walked up to me. And um, for my partner, it was, uh, they <laughs> they had been a, a drunk college student peeing on the side of the wall in the wrong alley where there was a, a deal happening <laughs> and they got a shotgun in the face to get out of there for my mother-in-law it was a bad relationship i believe my uh father-in-law it was a robbery and um, my sister-in-law was another bad personal situation so um, I remember the second time I had a gun in my face it was uh, in Central California trying to visit a, a friend's farm and we rolled up to their place at night and <laughs> some guy who was doing construction on a nearby house pulled out an assault rifle on us <laughs> as if that were at all necessary. Um, I, to this day, don't understand what was happening, but I remember being frozen in my tracks. And nobody wants that feeling. The fact that guns are this ubiquitous is pretty astonishing. I was reading a publication that uh, printed the figures there's nearly as many guns in the United States as there are people. That was from 2019, so I'm sure it's gone up since then. Um, but that's been my experience. As a teenager, I received a gun. It was a shotgun as a gift. It was a coming of age gift. It's not something I had asked for, but it was um, a, a family. It was something that quite, quite honestly, I was proud to have been given. The family hunts, the family bonds that way. And to, to arrive at that point and be entrusted with a firearm was uh, a pretty big deal, especially as a young woman. Um, because it's not really historically our <laughs> realm. But um, it was a very beautifully made item. Uh, Beretta over under 20 gauge shotgun. And um, I still have it. But you know, I'm born and raised in the city of Los Angeles and there's no reason for me to have that which is why it's in a gun safe at a ranch in Idaho and it almost never gets used. But I think about the number of guns that are in my city and the people have been talking about the fact that they have no use. And I stand by that. I am a gun owner and you know, most guns have no reasonable use.
I'm also a guitar player. If people were using guitars to mass murder my fellow citizens, I would support banning every single guitar, not just the ukuleles or the violins, but every stringed instrument. Because I don't need to play another one ever again. I like shooting my shotgun. I like hunting. But nothing's worth that. I'd be fine with an all-out ban. <laughs> just nothing's worth it. Um, I just got back from Sing Singapore. Singapore is one of those places you go and you're not really expected to feel <laughs> safe going there, I think. Um, you know, if you, there's signs posted everywhere that if you uh, have drugs on you, including like ADHD medications that are perfectly legal here, the penalty for holding them is death. For a lot of people, the turnover is 48 hours. It's not like here. Um, it's an extremely strict, kind of scary justice system. And yet, I just got back less than 48 hours ago, and I felt so safe there. They have a zero tolerance gun policy. There's a, um, if you are found to have used a firearm, it's a death penalty, just like that. Um, and because of it, there aren't guns. Kids go out at night, no problem. And uh, in a place where I expected to feel really quite unsafe, I found myself feeling really safe. And it, it, it startled me because I think it hammered home for me how unsafe I feel on a regular basis in my own home. You know, Los Angeles is a big city. There's a lot of big public gatherings, and I enjoy going to them. Sports games, concerts. I like to travel, so airports, or even just a restaurant <laughs> or temple. Um, I'm kind of shaking now, <laughs> thinking about how aware I am going out of the chance that I might confront violence in any of these places. Just going to the grocery store now. Or the chance that my friends won't come home. And uh, I um, don't understand why we keep letting that be the way that we live. It's such a loss. We've lost a sense of security and no amount of gun ownership buys that back. If you're drowning, you don't lower the floodgates. So, um, I wanted to talk about the third time that I had a gun held <laughs> to my head, and that was by myself. Um, I, I experienced depression, which is something that over 22% of women in America experience at some point. It's very common. During pregnancy, that actually goes up to one in three lately we've been seeing in um, pregnancy and postpartum my background is social work clinical social work uh, with a specialty in maternal mental health and we see that suicide is unfortunately uh going up the majority of suicides in this country 51 percent is the last figure i saw from 2019 
bar committed using a firearm. Um, and certainly the ones that, that work, firearm tends to help. It's, it's terrifying to think that mental illness rates keep going up amongst all of us at this point. I doubt anyone doesn't know someone who struggle with some real mental health challenges. You add the ubiquity to guns to that experience, and you're asking for tragedy. Um, so yeah, that last time, it wasn't even my gun. It's just a gun that somebody had in their house. And I managed to gather my wits and put it down eventually. But um, it's a very real powerful feeling. And I can understand why so many people go through with it. There's no reason for us to make it so easy. The highest rates of suicide are among white men in rural environments using farms. It's the same constituency that tends to be in support of uh, very little gun control. I don't really know what conclusion to draw from that yet, but I don't know, it's something to think about. There's a lot of things that can be talked about, and most of them have been discussed already. Um, but that's my contribution. In summary, there's a there's a scene in The West Wing. It's a great character, Ainsley Hayes, joins a Democratic administration. And she's a Republican. So she's talking to her coworkers and they're talking about gun control. She says, you guys don't hate guns. You hate the people who like guns. And that's what's messed up about it. You hate the people. I don't hate the people. I am the people. When I was taking finals in undergrad, I'd go to the shooting range to let steam. You know, I still go hunting. I've slaughtered a cow with a rifle. <laughs> and I have an appreciation. But nothing's worth that. No nothing um, that we've been seeing is worth that. And I am tired. I'm tired of um, being appalled. I'm tired of being afraid. I'm tired of feeling more safe in a country that wants to murder me for the crime of carrying Adderall on my person. Um, I'm tired of feeling more safe there than I do at home on a regular basis. I'm tired of having to worry about someone who doesn't even know who I am just getting their kicks because they're depressed and they want to end it all anyways, so they might as well take some of us out with them. I'm tired. I'm tired of being a mental health professional and knowing how easy it is for my clients to get their hands on a weapon like this. It's not like people don't use weapons other places, but uh, it's a lot easier to survive a knife attack. <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, that's it. I get it, and I don't get it. So, take my gun, please. 
take them all. That's my message. Thank you.